Okay, doing one today on a clean Drake L7, which was the later version of the uh, venerable Drake L4 two-piece um, dual 3500Z linear amplifier. This is just a walkthrough on the uh, RF deck only. Um, the Drake L7 has, you know, much better looks you know than the uh, Drake L4 but it is not as um, sturdy or heavy duty of an amp it's still a very good heavy duty amp but it's not as um, um, heavy duty made as the Drake L4 was um, you know why do people do that companies do that uh, even Drake um, again costs you know everybody's out to make money and you know when you're not making money or things prices rise parts rise people cut costs but anyway um, this beautified uh, Drake L4 you know has to do meters um, low band switch even though that's been modified is mono banded and the plate and um, power on AM SSB well no I'm sorry SSB CW and that actually changes the plate voltage. Um, SSB is basically the um, high voltage and CW um, it takes out a, a lot of the windings in the um, input side of the uh, plate transformer um, and lowers the voltage um, quite a bunch on CW in this amp. Um, variable AGC on the front and then you know um, push in bu selection buttons for volts grid current 3000 watts forward power 304 power 300 reflected and then standby switch and and some matching lights it's a, it's a nice amp but today we're just doing a walkthrough before we put it all back together unpowered on the RF deck alone with the covers off and um here on the inside of this is um, where you have your AC connections coming in. You can change jumpers for 110 to 220 over there. Uh, your low voltage is uh, that terminal strip up top. And then the rest of that in there is actually mods. Um, normally the input uh, tuning stuff would be in this hole under here and the band switch and all. And the band switch would, you know, switch the input tuners too. But since this has been mono banded, you know, that's all gone. And actually, the input tuner mono banded is the um, choke right there. And then it's got two variable trimmer caps um, one for the uh, tune side and load side of the input and the um, trimmer. Well, not the trimmer. The choke is variable too, so you can vary the choke or the cue and the tune and load on that on the input side. So, should be able to get to SWR very very low with that. And this here is a variable bias board. Um, originally, Drake used a um, negative, well, not negative bias, positive bias that they got off the power supply. And they use some heavy duty dropping resistors off the power supply that suck down a lot of power and a lot of heat in the power supply. Um, but modern um, technology, say for the bias, just put a resistor in the cathode between the ground and the uh, cathode of the uh, tubes. So it's not getting a good ground, so it can't conduct. And that's a much uh, easier way on the amp, you know, less heat less problems with big heavy hot um, dropping resistors connected to the high voltage you know trying to vo drop that voltage down you know for the um, cutoff bias and this is a board I bought off eBay I forgot the seller's name um, I think he's in Italy or somewhere um, this is a variable bias board and it can vary the bias I think from like two volts to like 30 volts for cutoff bias and I think the uh, Drake they say it's supposed to run about uh, 9 10 volts on the standard power supply and then this is the um, variable resistor put to the front of it 
in place of the um, band switch. So again, it's mono banded, and that's a 10 turn pot. So you can turn the bias, you know, way up, way down with that resistor there for the pot. And you can do, you know, high bias or high class, high bias, and you can change your class of operation from, you know, AB1, AB2, B, and C um, by varying that variable bias with this amplifier. Um, Pretty simple circuitry, you know, grounded grid, um, filament transformer, filament choke, because on a grounded grid cathode driven amplifier like this, the filament voltage and the RF voltage both drive the tubes off the same um, uh, cathode. So since you got both them voltage kind of mixing together, um, this choke keeps the RF from coming back through the filament transformer. So the uh, filament transformer goes through that choke and then into the tubes for the filament voltage. And then the RF coming from the relay, well coming from the input circuit, the relay and all that going into it. Um, you might can see the um, coaxial lines coming in there, same place that is connected to the uh, filament choke. Uh, they come together and this choke keeps the RF from backing through and going into the uh, filament transformer. You know, standard uh, uh, relay to switch it from input to output. That board there is just for the metering. You know, nothing special. Um, need a foot switch to key the amp. That's where the foot switch goes in. And, you know, pretty simple operation. Uh, this resistor here is the uh, new you know modded uh, bias resistor that um, cuts the tubes off in standby um, you know runs cool doesn't draw a lot of power you know not a lot of heat and you know even from a safety standard you don't have you know those dropping resistors coming off the 3000 you know volts to drop the voltage down which is kind of dangerous um, and you're wasting all that heat and power off the um, power supply with those heavy duty dropping resistors to drop that voltage down where this is a easy modern cheaper way to do it and most amplifiers companies nowadays modern ones they do it either this way or they use you know a low voltage supply you know for the bias they don't drop it off the high voltage anymore that's pretty much obsolete um, to do that that way so that's it on the underside of this thing. Um, not much on top, you know, top of your filament transformer, your um, tune cap there. I always say for most um, tube amplifiers, you need about four turns of um, coil. And there it is set up for, um, this will work on 10 or 15 meters um, and 12 meters. About four turns of um uh, tank coil then your load capacitor actually if this uh, amp was built solely for 10 meters you would probably need about a third maybe a quarter of the amount of capacitance that that cap has and you probably need about half of that but they need all that for them other bands that it had it in and I wasn't going to um, take them out and try to come up with something that fits when you know that's already there even though this is mono banded um, blocking cap there keeps the DC where the DC is supposed to you know to the tubes only and then lets the RF out it does the opposite of those chokes that I was just talking about with the filament choke and this choke too the chokes block the RF from going back down into the high voltage power supply that's what this choke and then those caps go to ground and then that second choke that's all they do is block RF from coming back down but the DC DC will go right through that choke RF will not so it's like a one-way diode um, against RF but it lets DC go through and this blocking cap is the opposite of you know what the choke do it lets the RF go out just fine RF will go uh, right through a small um, 
uh, capacitance capacitors but it blocks the DC from coming out and that's what that's for you know again not not the, a lot to this amp those resistors there are for the metering um, for your high voltage they're connected to the high voltage and they drop uh, that voltage down so um, to a much lower voltage so you can um, put a um, put it for the metering and even on that modern amps most of them um, they meter it through the um, cathode or the ground the voltage or a voltage drop on the ground side instead of doing it from the high voltage but you know this Drake was made probably uh, 70s and you know the the technology and the thinking was a little bit different um, that there's just a span uh, fan speed this thermal sensor when it um, gets a certain temperature too hot this thermal um, kind of like an overload but opposite it kicks in and then it turns the fan speed up at a certain temperature so it's a two speed you know fan and by the way the uh, Drake L7 uses a fan cooling no chimneys no forced air a lot cheaper why do companies do that again save money the Drake L4 had a uh, blower and chimneys and forced air cooling with the Drake L7 you know still a nice amp but you know went with a fan uh, not as good of a cooling cooling system as the uh, forced air and the blower is but it works uh, but not as efficient um, as the blower and they made it so it get, does get some air on the pins early amps that use a fan uh, you didn't get enough air on the um, uh, pins and the pins would overheat and melt the setter the solder out and cause all kind of problems so you know not a lot to it your meters there your um, board where you switch in you know the meters from the watt meter and the grid meter and the um, amp meter and all that kind of stuff there and that's about it um, this is the other side of that um, input circuit with the uh, variable input choke and the um, tune and load side of the um, uh, capacitors on the input side and that's about it to this bad boy so you know it's about ready to rock and roll and I got the power supply about ready to rock and roll and uh, just doing a walkthrough on it before we put it together and put the covers on it and fire it up so that's it for my walkthrough of the uh, Drake L7. This one's mono banded with a um, variable variable bias on the front uh, instead of a band switch. Mono banded for 10 through 15 meters. All right, that's it for this one. Bye.